as promised, we have to talk about that Michigan-Michigan State game happening in week two of the season this year and, of course, in a pandemic, so a lot going on. I want to bring in an expert, someone who knows this rivalry. How about Braylon Edwards? Braylon, how are you? Uh, I'm doing as well as can be after uh, yesterday's game, but you called me an expert, so that kind of lifts my spirits just now. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, get into this expertise of yours, right? So you're obviously a Wolverine fan. What are your thoughts seeing that loss, that 27-24 loss, when they were four touchdown favorites? Uh, it's very ironic that they were <laughs> they were favored to win by 24, and they actually only scored 24 points. So I thought that was pretty uh, entertaining. It's tough. You know, this is a game that Jim Harbaugh and his, his staff and his players needed. It's a game that, you know, we should have won. Uh, Michigan State didn't do anything special besides pass the ball and stop Michigan when they needed to. This was a this was a big this could have been a big win for the Michigan Wolverines and Jim Harbaugh because it had been three wins in a row against Michigan State. You beat a rival, you know, after you beat a team that many thought you would struggle with uh, in Minnesota. This could have been a launching pad, and instead it was actually a, a regression, a major regression. You have a guy in Mel Tucker who actually was on the Cleveland Browns staff when I played for the Browns. He was a DB's coach who knows his rivalry, you know, more than people think. They think he's coming from Georgia and Colorado. Well, they forgot that he was at Ohio State. So he understands Michigan's background, Michigan's makeup, and it's a tough loss, and it's one that we shouldn't have had. Now. I know you're a Michigan guy, but for the state fans in our area, what so sort of prop should Mel Tucker get from that week one where they turned the ball over seven times to going to Michigan and beating them? He gets the props of understanding what Michigan is in that defensive, uh, the front that they use. They play a lot of blitzes, which leave their secondary guys man up a lot of times. If you believe in your wide receivers and you believe in your quarterbacks and you believe in your pass protection, then you can take those shots on the outside, on the right or left. And I think he gets credit for that. I think All right. Also Inversely, what's uh -oh. the blame okay. for Jim Harbaugh here? Blame for Jim Harbaugh? Um, I think this is... Last week was a big win against Minnesota, and we talked about this on Friday, is getting over, having that, that winning hangover. Say so you guys won a good game against Minnesota. You were a lot better than a lot of people thought you would be. Like, letting that go to your head. And I think they were very relaxed because they beat Michigan State two times in a row. This would have been three. Uh, they're looking to December 5th or 6th, whenever the Ohio State game is, you look into that game. You feel like you've got a new coach in Michigan State who doesn't necessarily understand the program yet, who will eventually understand the program. I feel like they kind of, they like uh, sleepwalk into this game. All right, I want to do one more thing. This got a little bit of play on social media, the Milton and Antoine Simmons exchange. Let's listen to it first. And did you realize that Simmons, Antoine Simmons, was that good of a player? Antoine Simmons, who's that? 34, I think was his number. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really worried about him. <laughs> I mean, he's a heck of a player, but wasn't on my radar. Joe Milton was asked about you, and he said he's not on my radar. <laughs> um, I mean, it don't matter. Paulie B's back with us. So, I mean, I don't know what those guys do over there, but uh, but uh, we study our opponent. We know who we're playing against. Um, so, I mean, I don't care if I'm on Joe Milton's radar or not. You know what I mean? He's just a quarterback who plays here at, at, at Michigan. All right, Braylon, what do you think? Was that a jab from Milton saying he didn't know who Antoine Simmons was? So I would say to his defense, he's young. He's in the spotlight now, and he made a comment that he'll look at, you know, some, you know, later on this year or next year or maybe a couple years from now and realize he, maybe he didn't want to say that, and it had changed. But being in a space where you just lose a game or a game you should have won or a game that people had you favorite, and you want to win every game, you're emotional. And a lot of times, you respond. I've, I've been in this, even in the NFL, I responded in some ways in which I was like, ah, I can't have that coming back. So I think that he's more emotional. It's the first time he's been in that space. And he made that comment kind of to get himself out of that space. But, you know, it was a jab, but he'll look at it and he'll get better. All right, Braylon, um, thanks for your expertise in this matter. I'm sorry for your sake that Michigan didn't win in our first go around here. We got to come up with a name for we, this little we, we exchange because I'd love to have you as the season progresses. I would love to be here. So let's let's email and let's uh, let's throw some stuff at the wall and see what sticks. All right, Braylon, thank you so much. Steve, back to you.